We've been talking about Janet Yellen and the sort of perverse side effects or unintended consequences of an overly communicative Federal Reserve. Is there sort of a, a, a hoard mentality going on in your view where investors just take what she says uh, and then react in such a way that's perhaps overly positive? Do we not have enough uh, push-pull? I think the one thing we've learned is that when everyone's focused on a particular problem or issue, that's probably not the real risk we should all be worried about. So I do think that people are all focused on interest rates in the U.S., where are they going, and for that matter, around the world. It is an important element of our economy, but I think from an investment point of view, I think investors should be paying attention to a lot of other things. Um, predicting where this is going from here and what impact it will have on your investment strategy is a really ambiguous thing. We've mm -hmm. learned that from the past. But the coast might be clear for a while. I mean, that's the other reality of it, because uh, even as, as much as we might criticize it and say perhaps an overly communicative Fed uh, is not the best thing fundamentally for the markets, and that can be debated. But, you know, the reality is for, for the foreseeable future, it looks like good times. Well, Does anybody disagree with that? Well, no, I, I think a communication is one thing, and then there's prognostication. And I think this is a Fed of communication that tells you what it's thinking. I don't see anything wrong with that. I think knowing what the Fed's thinking is very helpful, and the Fed will pull back from positions if it feels that the market misunderstands what it's saying. This concentration on tapering forward guidance, I think it's fantastic. It's, a, it's something that people talked about with Stan Fisher before he got on the board. And the fact that the Fed no longer is focused on telling you what's going to happen in the future, I think, can only be good. Mm -hmm. But the market keeps moving higher. And I guess my point is that there's not enough. Uh, there, there aren't enough bears out there. I mean, hey, Norman Rubini is even bullish these days. I mean, people that you typically see as, as running a little bit scared. Um, David Rosenberg, oh. Rosie, our friend up in Canada, who's typically been very bearish, now pretty positive. Even uh, the likes of Gary Schilling not saying that, you know, doomsday is coming. I mean, all these folks who otherwise would have been that sort of voice of reason saying, hey, you know, watch out, they're sounding a different tune. Right well, one thing we're getting into here is markets are no longer correlating. You've got the stock market going up, and if you're an equity investor, you could say, well, the Fed's going to be in the market for a while. They didn't give us any reason to think they're not going to be. They didn't put a time frame on it. But we're also looking at earnings. Earnings are reasonably good. And, hey, the Fed is talking about raising interest rates maybe a little bit more because the economy is stronger. Well, that is That's good a good news. thing. That is good news for us, where the bond market is saying, well, rates are going to go up, so we're going to sell. And bond investors are selling today, and currency traders are getting out of foreign currencies, getting into the dollar because the interest rates are going to be higher here. So you're seeing this uncorrelated move movement between equities and other asset classes. I, I think it, this is a classic case where you just have to think in terms of diversification across multiple yield curves, multiple inflation regimes, We're talking about earnings and the classic price to earnings, or maybe we look at price to book. For those of us that take comfort in these fundamental measures, when you look across the globe, uh, one might argue that the United States market's a little overheated. Uh, that would be a difficult task as well. But if you look around the globe, you look at emerging markets, obviously parts of Europe right now, those markets don't look anywhere near as expensive as the U.S. market does from a multiple point of view. And their interest rate environments are also challenging as well as we know. We've been hearing about that a lot. Well, you know, we heard a lot from the Fed today about wages. Uh, you know, there's real concern, and we've talked about it before here, Mike, that you're just not seeing any kind of wage growth right now, and that's a problem. Uh, yet, you know, we're also seeing that the cost of living, according to today's data anyway, in the U.S., unexpectedly dropped in August for the first time actually in more than a year. You have the Labor Department report showing consumer price index uh, did fall two-tenths of a percent. It's the first decrease since April 2013. You had a drop in energy costs, which is good, uh, especially in light of everything that's going on in the Middle East. You had muted global growth uh, really helping to contain inflation. But I would just ask, are we running the risk of putting ourselves in a stagnation-like or even deflation-like environment? The Fed's doing all it can. It can't seem to have enough of an effect on wage growth or even generating much inflation in this economy. What's going on? Well, that's the big challenge, actually. I think, you know, obviously Janet Yellen is focused very much on the data. And uh, we'd all like to see wages pick up, employment pick up. Uh, some normal inflation. It'd be nice to see our uh, risk-free investments earning a return that's m closely aligned with inflation, but it's been a while since we've seen that. It's a very delicate balance. Uh, I think there is a risk that that could happen. Trish, at the same time, though, you have to remember where we're coming from. We're coming from 2009. The market's gone up a lot. If you do it on a real dollar basis, I don't think it's up that much. In fact, I think it's still a little bit below where it was some time ago. And 
my dad taught me something, and I think that that's the reason you keep seeing this power in the market. You don't fight the Fed. You have to be Fed wise, but you don't fight the Fed. Your dad taught you that. My dad He's an taught investor me that. as well. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. right. No, you don't fight the Fed, and I think that's why we're seeing you know a lack of bears out there because people are saying to themselves, as long as Janet Yellen is going to continue to be there, why would I not buy into this market? You're in an environment where companies can continue to do creative.